Can you hear me? You said you said you're not you, your microphone is out. It's off. Yeah. Okay, now. Uh, um my in my case, uh, completing my education is is an is an aspect that uh, become me more more mature. Yeah. You you have to say in that case, yeah, completing my education could be an aspect that could make me make me not become make me make me more mature. All right, or a mature person. Melissa, what do you think? Of all those, what, what is your choice? Um, for me, moving out of their moving out for, of their parents' home yeah. because you have to do everything by yourself, like cooking, I, I don't know, do the laundry, uh, the shopping, all by yourself. All right. So moving out of, of your parents' home could be a sign of maturity for you. All right. Ricardo, what about you? Um, it's difficult. It's difficult to choose only one. Uh, I think it's a mixture. Yeah, it's a mixture of everything, but being financially independent uh, is the the option that I that I would choose because uh, that's that's how we are that's how uh, we are supposed to live uh, for the rest of uh, our, lives. our lives so yeah. um, um, parents are not are not forever you know so we can't rely on them uh, all the time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there any of those that you have already accomplished? No. <laughs> you haven't completed your education. Are you a parent? I think only Tamara. Yeah. The rest are not parents. Melissa, are you a mother? Melissa? For, for example, uh, moving, moving out of the no. parents' home is an option, but sometimes uh, some people move out from the family home and they still receive uh, money from their parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Giselle, are you a mother? No? No. Okay. Uh, are you financially independent, any, any of you? No. <laughs> no, no, all right. Uh, what about, do your parents ask you for your opinion? Yeah, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you can decide by yourself. Yes. Okay. For example, if you want to smoke, you can decide it by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> all right. If you, want to, if you want to get married, you can decide it by yourself or not. <laughs> Would it be possible for you to get married now, for example? Um, I, I don't have a, <laughs> a girlfriend, so it's uh, almost- But let's suppose, let, let, let's stream, let's stream, Ricardo. <laughs> for all of you, uh, let's stream, okay? For all of you, Giselle and Melissa, if you now were totally, uh, completely in love with a person and you tomorrow decide, you know, well, we cannot live this way. I want to live with you. I want to probably, you don't think about getting married, but you can think about, let's see, uh, you know, I want to live with you. I want to move out and I want to live with you. Do you think that your parents would stop that or they would, uh, or would they allow you to do that? What do you think? I think my parents uh, could intend to show me the reality or what kind of things uh, it uh, that this decision uh, could um, 
changed my my life. Okay. You think that they would uh, probably they would uh, tell you not to do it, or they would give you an uh, a piece of advice, but they would support you. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they would support you in, in that idea? I think so. Yeah. All right. Okay. What about you, Melissa? I already know. <laughs> uh, my parents um, was, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, they, they didn't want to accept the relationship of my sister and she's uh, 31 years old. How old is your sister? Uh, 31. 31. And they, they yeah. do not accept her decision? At first. At first. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> so you don't know? You don't know? No. No. What about you, Ricardo? What do you think? If you if you told your parents that you want to get married, that you do you think that they would accept you? That would they would support you, or they yes, would? Yes, but they would try to convince me that it's not the best option at this age. <laughs> but I don't think they wouldn't allow me to do that because I am an adult. Uh, um, yeah, I think they they won't stop me. <laughs> yeah, they they won't. They won't stop you. Yeah. All right, okay, okay. You know, I uh, I got married at twenty one. Oh, so young. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, when I told my parents, it was. <laughs> It was everything a problem, yeah? It was uh, an earthquake in my house. There was an earthquake in my house. Uh, did, you feel, then, sorry? did you feel mature? At that age? No. no did way. you feel mature in that when you decided? No, no. I was very young. I was very innocent, I would say. I was uh, immature, but well. We, my my wife uh, got pregnant. And then you know we have to face the that situation, and uh, she was she was eighteen, seventeen. Was she? she was seventeen, I think, and I was twenty one. So we were pretty young, and uh, but well. Uh, Everything was crazy, terrible. But then my parents and my parents-in-law accepted the situation and we got married. And, uh, you know, and now we are 44 years together. My son is 44 years and he always wanted, when, when he was a little boy, he always asked why. And, you know, he started counting the, the months <laughs> and it didn't fit, you know, because it, if you got married in October and I and I was born in April, no, no way. <laughs> he didn't understand. But I said, okay, you are a six, six month boy. Yeah. <laughs> he accepted at the beginning of that. But it was funny. It was funny, but it was uh I had to I had to I had to grow. I had to grow up. I had to mature at the moment. Because I started like uh, studying and working, so it was like uh, with force. My maturity came with force. You know, <laughs> I wasn't mature, but I had to do it. From one moment moment to the other. Okay, um, so I think that the situation makes you. It's not that any specific time. It's not when you are independent. It's not when you when you move out from your house. It's not when you complete your education. It's not a moment. I think that this, all the events that are around you probably makes you more mature and uh, you are growing with this. It's not something that is instantaneous, right? Like, uh, oh, today I am mature. 
I, I wake up in the morning and I say, ah, oh, I am mature. No, it's not like that, you know. It's like it's something you are growing and you are, your life is changing. And uh, when you are, you know, taking responsibilities, that means that you are becoming mature. Because you start having responsibilities and accepting them and fighting for them. You are mature in a certain way. You are studying. You are, you know, um, fighting to get a, a degree. And that is a sign of maturity. Because some other people uh, don't cho didn't choose that. They prefer to do other things. They prefer not to study. Okay. So when you decide something, when you take choices, well, it's a, it's a sign of maturity. Okay, now let's move into, we're going to listen again to the, to the conversation, okay? And it says here uh, that we're going to listen to these two people and try to pay attention if the man or the woman, the ones who um, how, uh, add more to the conversation, yeah? Who gives more support to the conversation? Who helps to the conversation? The, the man or the woman, okay? So that is what you, uh, who of them expands the conversation? Pay attention to that. And now we're going to listen to the tape, okay? Here we go. Wait a minute. You need You cannot listen, wait. Wait. The whisk. Now we are going to listen again, all right? Speaking focus. Can you, Activity can you one. Can you? Yes. Now I'd like you to talk about something together for about two minutes. Here are some things that we often think make people mature and a question for you to discuss. First, you have some time to look at the task. Yeah, you have like one minute to, do, to look at the task. Okay, so I'm going to put it first. Now, talk to each other about the extent to which these things make people consider themselves to be mature. Shall we make a start? Okay. Mm, well, uh, first of all, I really don't consider that we ever complete our education. What I mean is, it may be the case that you finish a university degree, but nowadays a lot of people go on to do postgraduate courses or vocational training of some kind, even when they're quite old. It's more and more common for people to return to study throughout their lives. I think that um, being financially independent is the key. If you are still reliant on your parents for money, you are never entirely free to make your own decisions. So in some senses, you remain in the position that you were in when you were a child. You mean because you're having to ask your parents for money and possibly also having to justify what you spend it on? Yes. There's a lot to be said for that argument. In many cases, I think it does make people less able to take responsibility for their own decisions. And it often creates tensions in a family, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. I read recently about someone who was over 40 and had to go back to live with his elderly parents. He was actually doing all sorts of things for them they needed done and couldn't do themselves. So. There was a kind of balance in that case. And that brings me to another point. I don't think moving into your own flat or house necessarily makes you an adult either. A lot of people move out when they start university. I did. But although I probably thought of myself as very grown up, I wasn't really. Apart from earning your own living, I think the thing that really gives you adult status is having your own family. With children of your own, you grow up fast. Yes, 
you're forced to mature by having to make sacrifices and by being responsible for other people, aren't you? For me, that's the crucial thing. Taking responsibility or being treated as if you are capable of taking responsibility. That's why the real transition from childhood to adulthood is being treated as an adult. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So having your opinion sought by other adults is a real marker of maturity as I see it. It may be as a parent, as someone with professional skills and expertise, or simply as someone who has accumulated enough knowledge of the world to justify their opinions. Thank you. Now you have about a minute to decide which experience has the most effect on a person's maturity. Well, for me it's being a parent. I can't argue with the fact that people who are parents grow up fast. My older sister and brother-in-law certainly did. But I think having your opinions sought and respected is important too. So which one shall we choose? Mm, being a parent, I suppose, because children often seek their parents' opinions. We'll settle for that. All right. Who talk? I mean, who um, add to the conversation the most? The man or the woman? What do you think? The woman. The woman. Why? You said. Uh, because she tried to ask uh, the men. Yeah, he try, uh, About, she tried uh, some... to, to ask questions, right? She tried to ask questions, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, now in here, in, in the book, in this part, we're going to read that, and then you will see where we're going to read what, what uh, they say, a part that they say. Okay, as you are the man, um, you are Martin, then you are the only man here, apart from me. But in the in this in the group, um, Ricardo, you're going to be Martin, and uh, Melissa, you're going to be Daniela. So read that part, please, Martin. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> if you are still reliant on your parents for money, you are never entirely free to make your own decisions. So in some senses you remain in the position that you were in, in when you were a child. You mean because you're having to ask your parents for money and possibly also having to justify what you spend it on? Yes. There's a lot to be said for that argument. Argument. In many cases, I think it does make people less able to take responsibility for their own decisions and it often creates tensions in a family. Apart from earning your own living, I think the thing, I think the thing that really gives you adult status is having your own family. With children of your own, you grow up fast. Yes, you're first to mat make mature by having to make sacrifice and by being sacrifices. Sacrifices. Sacrifices and by being responsible for other people, aren't you? All right, so here we have a clear who, um, who expands the conversation and who doesn't. Look at the, the second Martin answers. He said, yes. Yes. Nothing else. While the other girl, I mean that the woman, uh, there's a lot to be said for that argument. So she's expanding what he said, right? In many cases, I think it does make people less able to take responsibility, blah, 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 blah. Then he talks and she completed what he is thinking. Uh, apart from earning your own living, I think that, 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 that. And then she said, yes, you are forced to mature by having to make sacrifices and by being responsible for other people, aren't you? Right? So uh, it is um, quite... Uh, 
interesting to see the way they talk. Okay, and then when they come to an agreement, also the man says yes, and that's it. While she is the one who um, expands the conversation, she is the only one. Okay, um, I'm going to show you now. Uh, let me see the script. Okay, we're going to see the script. Here you have it. So we're going to listen now and we're going to follow the reading. Okay, let's see. Oops, but let me see here. This. Unit three, speaking focus, activity one. Now I'd like you to talk about something together for about two minutes. Here are some things that we often think make people mature and a question for you to discuss. First, you have some time to look at the task. I have to talk, to look at the task, it's for one minute. I'm going to try to make it faster here. Now, talk to each other about the extent to which these things make people consider themselves to be mature. Shall we make a start? Okay. Mm, well, uh, first of all, I really don't consider that we ever complete our education. What I mean is, it may be the case that you finish a university degree, but nowadays a lot of people go on to do postgraduate courses or vocational training of some kind, even when they're quite old. It's more and more common for people to return to study throughout their lives. I think that um, being financially independent is the key. If you are still reliant on your parents for money, you are never entirely free to make your own decisions. So in some senses, you remain in the position that you were in when you were a child. You mean because you're having to ask your parents for money and possibly also having to justify what you spend it on? Yes. There's a lot to be said for that argument. In many cases, I think it does make people less able to take responsibility for their own decisions. And it often creates tensions in a family, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. I read recently about someone who was over 40 and had to go back to live with his elderly parents. He was actually doing all sorts of things for them they needed done and couldn't do themselves. So... There was a kind of balance in that case. And that brings me to another point. I don't think moving into your own flat or house necessarily makes you an adult either. A lot of people move out when they start university. I did. But although I probably thought of myself as very grown up, I wasn't really. Apart from earning your own living, I think the thing that really gives you adult status is having your own family. With children of your own, you grow up fast. Yes, you're forced to mature by having to make sacrifices and by being responsible for other people, aren't you? For me, that's the crucial thing. Taking responsibility or being treated as if you are capable of taking responsibility. That's why the real transition from childhood to adulthood is being treated as an adult. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Oops. So this. having your opinion sought by other adults is a real marker of maturity as I see it. It may be as a parent, as someone with professional skills and expertise, or simply as someone who has accumulated enough knowledge of the world to justify their opinions. Thank you. Now you have about a minute to decide which experience has the most effect on a person's maturity. Well, for me it's being a parent. I can't argue with the fact that people who are parents grow up yeah. fast. My older sister and brother-in-law certainly did. But I think having your opinions sought and respected is important too. So which one shall we choose? Hmm... Being a parent, I suppose, because children often seek their parents' opinions. We'll settle for that. Okay, so now you will see, or oh, you can see the way it works. Okay, so you have to work 
collaboratively and uh, you have to discuss about one point and then come to an agreement and decide one thing. What was their decision in the end? Being a parent is the point in which you um, consider yourself a mature person. Do you agree with that or not? Do you think that being a parent is the moment in which you in which you can feel yourself a mature person or not? For example, I think that Ricardo said that when you are uh, independent, financially independent, uh, Melissa, I can't remember, and Giselle mentioned, I can't remember now what you mentioned, uh, being asked for their opinions, I think. And uh, completing the education, someone said that. Okay, now, do you have the same idea after listening to these people or not? The idea, the idea that you have at the beginning. Do you still have the same idea or the same opinion? Yes. <laughs> yes. What was your opinion, Ricardo? Um, being financially independent. All right. Okay, Melissa, what about you? Do you have the same opinion that you had at the beginning? Or, or did you change? Um, no, yes. I have the same opinion. What was your opinion? Moving out of their parents' home. Yeah, moving out from parents' home. And what about you, Giselle? Now I agree with Ricardo. Yeah. Uh, because I think that it's difficult to, to, to be mature if you don't have the the money or the, the money the money money no money money possibilities to do what we we can do the all right money. okay good good now um i'm going to show you the other image of from the book now and uh okay this part the second part it says here look at some of daniela's ideas use the suggestion in brackets yeah to respond to, to respond to and expand on them. Then act out the conversation with another student. This is, the, this is Daniela's opinion. It's more and more common for people to return to study throughout their lives. And um, so you have to agree and give an example of someone who has returned to study. Agree with that idea and give an example of someone who has returned to study. Now, this is, this is going to be your job, Ricardo. Melissa, this is the opinion. I don't think moving into your own flat or house necessarily makes you an adult either. A lot of people move out when they start university. I did, but although I probably thought of myself as very grown up, I wasn't really. What do you have to do? You have to expand the conversation by express interest in Daniela's comments about not being grown up, and then comment on your own experience, okay? Express interest in Daniela's comment about not being grown up and then comment on your own experience. So you can write that at, right now, while I'm telling Giselle, you have, to start, uh, you have to start writing your opinion, the expanding over the conversation. Then I'm going to say this and you're going to expand the conversation, right? And Giselle, this is your, your topic. That's, that's why the real transition from childhood to adulthood is being treated as an adult. Do you see what I mean? Say that you do and give an example of being treated like an adult to check that this is what Daniela means. Okay? Okay? Yeah, so now you have one minute to, come to write your ideas. And then I'm going, we are going to do the dialogue. I'm going to be Daniela and you're going to be, uh, you're going to expand the conversation. All right, I'll give you one minute.
Macarena is there. Macarena? No. Seems that she's not there. Ready, time. Okay, so I'm going to start with the with the conversation and you, Ricardo, are going to expand the first part. Okay, it's more and more common for people to return to study throughout their lives. Uh, yes, it is more common today or nowadays because people have, have more access to education that they had in the past, you know? And for example, all of my siblings are studying at the university and it's a common thing. Uh, it's uh, more common to uh, study than uh, not to study. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, I don't think moving into your own flat or house necessarily makes you an adult, an adult either. A lot of people move out when they start university. I did. They start university. I did, but although I probably thought of myself as very grown up, I wasn't really. Well, everyone, everyone feels grown up when they move out from their parents' house. And in my experience, I never had to move out from my parents' house. So, but I pretended to move. Um, I, sorry, I don't pretend to move out without having money uh, because it is important to be economi economically independent to, you know, if you want to have your own house. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's why the real transition from childhood to adulthood is being treated as an adult. Do you see what I mean? Isel, are you there? Isel. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Yes, I agree with the with this idea. For example, in my case, uh, I can decide what religion is for is important for me or uh, in what religion I want to believe. Really? Really? Why? Yes. Why? Because my parents, there's no opinion in in that aspect of my life. Ah, okay. So they don't care if you, to what religion you, to what um, religion you you profess. They don't, they don't care about that. Yes. All right. Okay, good. Now let's go into exercise four. We're going to do the, the next listening. All right, the next listening. Uh, I'm going to share that. Um, and uh, let's see, I have to look for it. Uh -huh. I can't wait. Uh, number 10 here. Unit three, speaking focus, activity four. Thank you. Can I have the booklet, please? How important is it to continue to seek- Can you hear or not? Yes? Yes, can you hear? Okay, so it says here, yes. listen to the candidates doing the part four task and answer the question. 
which of them has ideas that are closest to your point of view? To your point of view, your personal point of view. Number two, how would you respond to and expand on these ideas? And is there anything either of the students says that you disagree with? Okay, we're going to focus on the things that you agree and the things that you disagree, all right? Pay attention to that. They are going to say some things and you have to uh, decide whether you agree or you disagree with those ideas, okay? Um, let's do it. Advice from older people throughout our lives. Very. Unit three, speaking focus. Activity four. Thank you. Can I have the booklet, please? How important is it to continue to seek advice from older people throughout our lives? Very. I think older people have a lot to offer, particularly on family matters. Yes, indeed. All those years of experience of bringing up children are invaluable. But I think that there are a whole range of issues on which older people can offer advice and guidance. Such as? Well, I certainly wouldn't ask my grandmother how to delete an app from my phone, but I do go to her for all sorts of other practical advice. She's a wonderful cook and she knows how to make things you don't find in recipe books, for example, but I also just consider her to be a wise person in general with insights that I perhaps don't have. Some people say we have stopped respecting older people. What do you think? I think we have a bit because the world has changed so quickly and they haven't always been able to keep up with the changes in technology, for example. This means we sometimes even make fun of them, something that suddenly wouldn't have happened when they themselves were young. No, it wouldn't. And it doesn't happen in traditional societies even today. The idea of older people as a source of wisdom is still very strong in those contexts. Thank you. That is the end of the test. All right, now we're going to listen to it again, but now we're going to read it at the same time, all right? Uh, okay, so can you see it? Yes? All right. And we're going to listen to it again. Yes. Unit three, speaking focus, activity four. Thank you. Can I have the booklet, please? How important is it to continue to seek advice from older people throughout our lives? Very. I think older people have a lot to offer, particularly on family matters. Yes, indeed. All those years of experience of bringing up children are invaluable. But I think that there are a whole range of issues on which older people can offer advice and guidance. Such as? Well, I certainly wouldn't ask my grandmother how to delete an app from my phone, but I do go to her for all sorts of other practical advice. She's a wonderful cook and she knows how to make things you don't find in recipe books, for example, but I also just consider her to be a wise person in general with insights that I perhaps don't have. Some people say we have stopped respecting older people. What do you think? I think we have a bit because the world has changed so quickly and they haven't always been able to keep up with the changes in technology, for example. This means we sometimes even make fun of them, something that suddenly wouldn't have happened when they themselves were young. No, it wouldn't. And it doesn't happen in traditional societies even today. The idea of older people as a source of wisdom is still very strong in those contexts. Thank you. That is the end of the test. Okay, it, th there was some part that was not there. Okay, But in general, do you agree with what they said? Or do you disagree in any part of it? For example, they say that you can still continue uh, asking for advice to all people. Uh, the woman said that she wouldn't ask her grandma, for example, to, uh, to turn on or off the, uh, an application in the cell phone, but she can ask other things like uh, things about books or things about cooking. 
because she's very good at that. And uh, what else? Uh, they say that the man says that some so in, in some way people are not are not res young people are not respecting adults because uh, they don't know many things like technology for example so they make fun of them okay do you agree with what they say or do you disagree in any aspect Do you agree that uh, nowadays young people do not respect adults and they make fun of them sometimes? Yes. Yes, really? Yeah, uh -huh. young people usually disrespect the older people and don't take into account the, what they think. Yeah. Because okay. they, they think older people is are uh, outdated or old fashioned. <laughs> mm -hmm. But do you do you respect old people, uh, Ricardo? Yes, a lot. Yeah. Do you have anybody uh, old near you? And uh, no, my my grandparents live uh, far away from here. <laughs> Yeah. But do you see them from time to time? Um yes, I I see my my grandfather um time to time he lives in Algarrobo. Yeah. So okay. it's not it's not uh, it's not really far but um um there's no uh um time to to go <laughs> ah, that's a that's a lie yeah <laughs> that's a lie <laughs> i don't i don't believe that that is always time if you want to go that is always time the problem is that sometimes we uh, how can i say it but we um um privilege other things over the things which are more important like visiting, yeah, yeah. Like That's visiting your, your grandparents, for example, you, you, uh, you, you give more importance to other things, right? And that is not good. That is not good. Because when you, when you become old, you're going to like to be visited, for example. The other day I told you about the movie. In that movie, the one that uh, El Inspector Tobo, something like that. El Agente Tobo, I think is the name. Yeah. The movie. In that case, I think that what most um, dislike old people is the fact that they are not uh, taking into consideration. They are not considered by the adults. They are not visited. They are not cared. Okay, so that is pretty bad. Now, what about the other thing? What things would you like? What things would you ask? For advice to an old person, Michelle and Melissa. If you had to, to ask for advice to an old person, what things would you ask them to, to give you a piece of advice? How to cook, love, uh, how to raise a child, uh, about book, what things? Melissa? Um, well, have my grandmother. I used to um, ask her about herbs. About what? Herbs. Yeah. Okay. Like what? Things. Um, well, I don't know the names in English. <laughs> tell me. And tell me in Spanish it, it, to see if I know. Oh, okay. Um, about the medicinal uses like uh, menta coca, I don't know, uh, manzanilla. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Like, well, those were, were practical practical things about medicine, like uh, traditional medicine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You asked her about traditional recipes, traditional medicine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Giselle, anything that you would ask an old person? Uh, when I have my... 
my father mom. Uh, I asked uh, her about cooking, but I was so uh, so child or at that time, and uh, the the questions are not important or not. Uh, you didn't care much about it. That was yes. the idea. Okay, but I, I didn't get what you, who was that person? Your grandpa, your grandma, who? Uh, my grandma. Your grandma. Did she die? But, uh, yes. Okay. And I, when did she die? In 20, 2013. Ah, 2013, a long time ago. Yeah, okay. So you were a child at that moment, so probably you you didn't care much, right? Mm -hmm. When you are so young, sometimes you well, I think I think that we used to or we tend to think that they are going to live forever. Uh, and uh, we don't realize that we might uh, lose them one day, right? So um, it's a uh, it's sad because we don't care about them at those those moments. Sometimes I feel that I didn't give enough. For example, in my case, my mom died quite young. She, she wasn't young, but she was not an old person. She was 78 years old. And I still feel that I, uh, that I didn't um, take advantage of her in, in a good sense, not in the bad sense. Take advantage of her wiseness. She was wise, she was intelligent, she was, but I, in those days, I, uh, I didn't realize that. So now I think I should have done something different. Well, my dad lived till this year, so he was pretty old. So I, I could live with him and I could talk to him and I, can, I could discuss with him a lot, okay? But with my mom, I think I, uh, I didn't take advantage of her wiseness. Yeah. But well, that's life. And that's, those are the things that we do when we are young. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's move now into the next page, page 32. Go to page 32 in your book. All right. Wait a minute. I have to, yeah, here it is. Page 32, here we have this now. Uh, it says blue zones. And we're going to work with this, which are clothes. Remember those exercises, right? Clothes, in which you have to choose the, the most appropriate word to insert in that uh, reading. We're going to read it first without the words. Yeah. without the words and try to understand the idea, the general idea. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, you said start reading please without the words. In the first one is, is there, you can read it, but the other ones you just pass, okay? Let's start reading. Blue songs. Although the aging process the aging. isn't- food. Remember that is a vowel, the aging. The aging process isn't fully understood. Scientists do know that health and longevity a complex interplay of genetics and environment. Researcher Dan Bautner has spent years visiting areas of the world where people tend to live longer, healthier lives in an attempt to what these environmental factors might be. Okay, uh, Melissa, go on reading, please. He identified. He identified areas he calls blue zones, where people live particularly long and happy lives. Lives, Sar lives. lives. Uh, Sardinia, for example, has the highest of male centenar centenarians in the world. 
Okinawa, the longest disability-free life. And Costa Rica, Nicanoya Peninsula. Nicoya, Nicoya Peninsula. Nicoya. Nicoya, Nicoya Peninsula, middle aged, aged residents aged. who are middle, middle aged. Middle aged. Middle aged. Middle aged residents who are four times more likely to their 90th birthday than their in the United States. Okay, Ricardo, continue. As diverse. As diverse as, as diverse as the people in the blue zones might be, maybe they share a number of characteristics. Their homes physical activity, they avoid overeating, have per purposeful lives and lives. are surrounded by lives. Lives, lives, sorry. Purposeful, 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 lives. purposeful, purposeful lives, lives and are surrounded by others who value and appreciate them. As Butner Butner observes, these patterns not only in lives that are, lives, that are lives that are longer, but in lives well led. All right. Okay. Life, plural, lives. It's an yes. irregular plural, right? Because it's becomes yeah, like knife knives. Life, lives. Okay, it's the same sound. Okay, uh, without uh, using the words that are in the close exercise, what are they talking about? Uh, what is this article talking about? What is the word that defines or this article? Or what you understood? What are the blue zones? Zones where people have uh, long lives. Yes. And happy lives. <laughs> yeah, happy life, long life, yeah. and a healthy life in general, okay? So the blue zones are places in which people live longer, have a better life, a healthy life, and uh, they are happier for, for the same reason, okay? That is what they are talking about, okay? Um, now, we have to insert now the words. Okay, so it says here, although the aging process isn't fully, and you have in there, appreciated, it's in fully appreciated, it's in fully understood, it's in fully known, it's in fully identified, the correct word is understood. Scientists do not do know. In here, you, you see that the, the, uh, the auxiliary is giving emphasis to the, to the verb no. Because the, the common way to say that scientists know, but when you say scientists do know, is you're putting emphasis in the word that they know. Yeah, scientists do know that health and longevity involve, demand, beg, or need a complex interplay of genetics involve. and environment. What do you think? Involve, that is the right thing. Involved. Scientists do know that health and longevity involve a complex interplay. Demand, no, it's, uh, the meaning is different. Beg, what is beg? What is to beg? To beg is ask for money, please, or to beg is ask for something. Yeah, that is beg. Also, it's like a way of respect. I beg your pardon. Yeah. So beg, when you're begging, you are asking someone in a very, you know, profound way. So in here, does does not have anything to do. And need also, no. So it's longevity involve a complex interplay of genetics and environment. Researchers, researcher Dan Butner has spent years visiting areas of the world where people tend to live longer, healthier lives in an attempt to, what? number two, to sort, to conclude, to settle, 
or to determine what these environmental factors might be. Conclude? No. Determine? Determine. determine. You determine a factor. It's a collocation. Determine a factor. In an attempt to determine what these environmental factors might be, he identified areas he calls blue zones, where people live particularly long and happy lives. Sardinia, for example, has the highest of male centenarians in the world. As the highest, you have number three, amount, instance, concentration, figure. Concentration? Concentration. Yes. Highest concentration of male, right? Male uh, centenarians. Okay, the rest is for homework. Okay, the rest is for homework. You have to complete, so you know here what uh, is the, the way to work with this, okay? So this is a very good exercise because you learn, you learn not only one word, but also other words. For example, for example, in here, you're going to have equals, peers, colleagues, partners. Probably peers, you don't know it. Probably, I don't know. In here, figure, what is figure? You have, for example, amount, instance, concentration, you chose concentration. And figure, what is the meaning of figure? It's what like a, a concept that uh, it is used in study, statistics. Good. Statistics. Uh, it's, it's related to numbers. Yeah. One figure is one number. Yeah. Yeah. The statistical figures, that means the statistical numbers, right? That's the idea. Okay. Uh, in here, for example, which number three, which option would you choose to complete these two sentences? Compare your answers with a partner. You have a large of the students felt their needs would be better served by an on campus health center. You have quantity, proportion, amount, or figure. Amount? No. Why not amount? Because amount goes with uncountables. Amount of money, amount of uh, happiness, amount of, you know, something that you can't count. When you have a, a countable- Number one or number two? Yeah. No, 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 Where? no, no, I'm talking about number three, number one. Three, one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Remember that amount is for uncountables. And here yes, is number I, of I, students. I, uh, so what would be quantity, proportion, amount, or figure? Figure. Mm -hmm. Proportion. 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 A large proportion of the students felt their needs would be better served by an on-campus authentic. He had withdrawn, withdrawn a large of I'm money out. earlier than morning, that morning. And there you have number, proportion, amount of figure. Amount. Amount, yes. Yeah, number is for countables. Amount is for uncountables. Money is uncountable. Okay, uh, number four. Look at the questions in activity two. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm going to go down here. Speaking uh, about this article, answer the question, then compare your answer with other students. What do, the, what do the three places mentioned in the article have in common? What do they have in common? The people. What? Mm. What about the people? Because the everywhere you go, life. there are people. Right. Life conditions of, of the people. For example, healthy, or happiness. 
or well, I would say, yeah, you, you're right in a certain way, but the, th the three, the, the things that they have in common is that they are blue zones. Blue zones. They are blue zones. And what does that mean? It means that in those areas, people live longer. They live until a hundred years. That is what the minister, no, the, the, the president, uh, Ms. Cox from the AFPs want for us. She wants us to work until we are 103 years old, right? So <laughs> they want us to live longer, yeah, and to work longer, which is the worst thing. Yeah. If you could live anywhere when you retire, would you choose one of these places or somewhere else and why? Would you like to live in any place? Would you like to live when you retire? What do you think is the, is the, the best place to live? when you retire. I have to think about that. Huh? I'm ready to retire, but you are so far away. But if you could, if you could find, or if you could choose a place to live when you retire, which would be that place? Come on, hurry up. You said, what is your I place to choose, live? I could choose a, a, a place where, where life, uh, will will be very i don't know como puedo decir movida como loca on the move you can say but be careful with your structures uh, you said because you said i would choose right would and then you use will ah, yeah, okay i would choose i would choose a place where uh, life could be um, very active, for example. If you use would, then you have to use past tense. Never would yeah. and will together, right? Okay, what about you, Melissa? What is your place, your um, uh, favorite place to live when you retire? Well, I will choose for a place that had a lot of nature around. Maybe. Yeah, a place uh, where you, you, you can live with... Uh, you can, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can be together with nature, right? Okay, what about you, Ricardo? Um, I would like to live uh, at the coast, uh, you know, next to the beach or in front of a beach, and uh, that's what I would like to, yeah, uh, near the coast. You would like to live near the coast, near yeah. the ocean, near the ocean, yeah. right? Okay, good. Uh, uh, would you like to live like very old, like uh, 90, 95, 100? What would be your, your ideal age to, to live? 90, maybe. <laughs> 90, why 90, Ricardo? And yeah. not 100. Mm, 90 is the the age where I think I will have completed all of my wishes, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, okay, okay, yes. So what about you, Giselle, what about you? Uh, maybe until 80s. A the 80s, yeah, until the 80s, yeah, all right. And you, Melissa? I don't really care as long as I can do everything by myself and I don't want to depend on, on anyone. <laughs> depend on, depend on anyone. Depend, not depend off, depend on. Depend on anyone, right? Yeah, that's a good thinking. I think that I would like to live until I feel okay with me, until I feel, I, until I, I can do everything without help. I think that the worst for an, for an old person is that they cannot depend on themselves. They have to depend on other people, yeah? Like my father, for example, when he was, uh, there, his last years, he depended on me. If I wasn't there with him, he was scared. He didn't feel well. So it's uh, something, it's not good, right? Okay. 
Let's move to the next page. And we are going to start uh, some statements in here. Okay, page 33. Page 33. Here. It says, if your parents live to be over 80, no, over 85, you probably will too. Do you agree with that or not? If your parents live to be over 85, you probably will too. Do you think that you live according to your parents' life? Uh, yes, I think genetics plays an important role in that case. Uh, you know, the previous um, diseases and that things kind of things those kind of things those, those kind of things yeah things. right genetic could be important yes what about the rest do you agree or do you think that is not it's not probable uh i partially agree because in fact uh, genetics play a huge role but you can have an accident or your style your lifestyle uh, to be um, bad. <laughs> so it depends on the cares of the person, how the person cares of themselves. I don't know how yeah. to say that. All right. Okay. Giselle, do you agree? I, I agree with Melissa too. Yeah. All right. I don't agree. Because, for example, in my case, my mom died at 78. My dad died at 95, but my brother died at 63, earlier than my father and my mother. So I don't know how long I'm going to live because you know, all the uh, signs don't tell me exactly, right? Because if my mother had died and my father had died late in their lives, I would say, yeah, I'm going to die also very late, but my, my brother, died pretty soon. He got cancer and he died in one year, right? So I think that sometimes it works, but some others uh, don't, right? Uh, uh, now, number three, it says, read that please, Giselle. Number three in the, in the speaking. Having? People in past centuries seldom live Seminal? No, no, number three, number three. Ah, having a stressful job reduce your reduces, life reduces. reduces your life expectancy. expectancy. Do you agree with that? Having a stressful job reduces your life expectancy? Yes. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, right. And we, and we have a stressful job. You are going to have a stressful job, right? Because you're going to be teachers. Teachers uh, get stressful all the time. Yeah. Get stressed all the time because you have to give, you have to create things all the time. You have to be, you know, working with people. And that's hard. Sometimes it's really hard. And also it depends where you work. Because nowadays you can, you can work in good places, but also you can work in some places which are very dangerous and Sometimes uh, difficult, right? So yeah, a stressful job reduces our life expectancy. And now this one, married people are more likely to live longer lives than single people. What do you think about that? You are, you are all up to now, you are single. So you probably are going to live less than me because I am married. Do you agree with that or not? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, most of people that I know uh, that are in uh, that are uh, married uh, have many years. Have longer lives. No, they don't have years. Remember, they have. are they are more years, they, right? Okay, okay, yeah. You, so you agree in a certain way with this, Melis? Uh, you said. Yes. What about the rest? 
What's your idea? If you get married, you have more possibilities. I've never heard of it, so I don't have an opinion of this. Why not? Because I don't know. I don't know if that if that's true or not. <laughs> <laughs> but for what you know, for what you have seen, right? Do people who are single uh, die sooner than the ones who are married? Or not? In your case. I mean, in uh, your family, for example. Um, no, it's relative. I don't, I don't, it's relative. I don't think it can be like a fact, okay? happen that some people who are married are going to die pretty soon like my brother for example my brother got cancer and he died at 63 he was pretty young full of life and full of i mean I, when i say full of life he was full of life he was a a person who loved to tell jokes he was very funny my my brother was a very nice person but suddenly he died, okay? So it's kind of a complicated thing. Well, we are, we are almost done. Uh, so people, next Tuesday, we're going to have normal classes and Thursday, we're going to have the writing, okay? Okay, so start, read at the back of your, I think at the back of your uh, book, there are some uh, like uh, tips about how to write something. When you write your essays, remember that you have to have, you have to write with an structure. It's not that you write whatever you want. You have to have it like a, you know, like a, you present the ideas, you state the idea first, then you give options, and then you got to a conclusion. Okay, so you when you write an essay or when you write a proposal, you have to follow the structure of this. So for that day, Tuesday, be prepared to write something uh, like that. So you have to know the difference between a formal letter, a proposal, an essay, an email, etc. Okay? The type of language that you have to use. In an essay, you have to, to use a formal language, for example. Okay? So in that case, you have to be prepared for that. Don't forget. Okay, so see you on Tuesday. You were very partic participative today. I like that. I like that. You have to, you have to go on participating because it's the only way to improve your English. No matter if you make mistakes here, no problem because in here you can make mistakes, and I'm going to correct you because that's my job. Okay? It's my job. I have to correct you, but uh, you can do it in here. It's pretty good that make mistakes but you have to you are jumping into the pool and that is good it's good to talk it's good to say things when you start saying things you start like paying attention to your mistakes okay okay so that will be all for today see you on tuesday on tuesday right okay bye 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 thank you thank you bye bye, bye. see you see you, see you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you're running around.